Hop là. So, man, first, I'll say it again. Thank you for accepting the invitation. It's a real pleasure for me. I'm loving what you do in comics. It's fantastic. And I'm loving a lot of things that you did. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So, first, how are you? Jeremy Adams. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I think you're the one who alerted me to the amazing uh, French hardback yeah. version of the, the Flash books. And boy, they're beautiful. Beautiful. Look at those things. Look at that. I have both. Oh, I think you're... you don't even have uh, the, 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 the trade paperback for now uh, in, in the US? No. no I, our, my first trade paperback came out, but it was uh, half of it's mine and half of it's some other writers before. Okay. It was Flash Volume uh, 16. And then, but these, they sent me three copies of those, the first one. And I was like, oh, this is a thousand percent better. It's so slick. Um, and I remember you, uh, you made a video for Twitter when you received the, the first one. It was so touching to see you so happy oh. with the French edition. Well, you got to understand, for me, comic books, I, you know, I grew up with them. Yeah. My dad drew some comics for DC when I was a little kid, but my parents were divorced very early. And comic books were also kind of a safe place for my dad and I to talk about things. Mm. It was an easy way for me to connect with my father by going like, oh, comic books. And so as a little kid, I, I just loved comic books. Yeah. He was doing uh, Captain Atom, I think, or something like that. He did Captain Atom in the 80s. Yeah. Before that, he did like a couple issues of Ghosts, which was something with Doctor 13, but not very many. You know, um, but in my mind, in my mind, it was everything, right? And um, um, but comic books, I we didn't have a comic book store in town. You would you would get them at Seven Eleven or whatever. And um, I was I was a nut for comic books. I spent all my money on comic books, and um, I've always wanted to get into comic books. And I I I backdoored my way in. I I started yeah, writing totally. animation. And and then from animation like movies and and stuff and then and then suddenly I was on a list and they let me do comics but I'm I'm relatively new at it I'm just it's all my love of comic books my deep knowledge of comic books is like oh they asked me do you have any ideas I'm like do I have any ideas I have like <laughs> 40 years of ideas are you kidding me <laughs> like here, but here that's, that's the thing I, I find very interesting. Uh, for us readers, we think that a lot of writers of in, in comic books industry want, at some point, to go into uh, into into TV or into uh, movies. But you did the opposite. Yeah. You, you you were already in live action, in animation, yeah. in a lot of things. But you wanted to go in comics. Yeah. That was your thing. Yeah, I when when I first uh, basically what happened was Warner Brothers Animation has a great reputation for being um considerate and uh doing a great job with dc animated mm -hmm. properties like dc just doing you know adaptations or real movies or whatever and so um dan didio was going to do this thing called 5g mm -hmm. and he asked for a list of animation writers and i just happened to be on that list and we went into the room and he explained what 5g was and he was very excited and and afterwards, I remember I went to a bar nearby and I had my two of my friends were like, well, Jeremy, uh, you know, I walk in and they're talking about it. They're like, do you it's, think Tim should... it's Tim. Tim's one of them. Yeah. And another friend, they're like, do you think we should do this? And I'm like, guys, someone asked you if you're a God, you say yes. Like, we got to do this. Like, I've been big. I've been trying to figure out how to get into comics for years. I ended up, um, there's a guy, there's a great guy. He, he runs Aftershock Comics now. His name's yeah. Mike Hartz. And Mike um, is, he was a uh, editor on the X group and then the Bat group. And the first time I pitched a comic was to him, I think probably 10 years ago, I pitched on a, a Batwing. It was a Batwing uh, pitch. And I was like, ah, you know, and I didn't get it, but I was like, I'm going to get <laughs> I'm going to keep pitching, and if I could find other people in the comic industry, I'm going to be like, "Hey, I'm I, I do things." And and it took me that. I mean, it took me over ten years before they yeah. gave me a shot, and I still don't know if I know what I'm doing. But you know, my first my first one was the Future State Black Adam, and um, I kept thinking I I didn't know what I was doing, and I was just having fun, 
And mm -hmm. I, there was a moment at the end of the first issue, and I said, um, you know, to my editor, Mike Cotton, I was like, hey, can I bring in this character, you know, Gold Beetle? And I was like, there's, and then when they said yes, I was like, oh, they're just going to let me do weird stuff. This is great, you know, and, and it's it. a lot more fun. And then he came to me and he said, uh, do you want to do it? Do you have any ideas for the Flash? I'm like, do you have any ideas? Yes. Let's do Quantum Leap. Let's do this thing. Let's, you know, and, um, and he let me, he let me do it. And I don't know, it, part of it is, I know it's sort of unusual that people stay on a book for, for a certain amount of time. Um, but I, I think maybe D because Warner Brothers, the parent company over DC is changing hands yeah. so many times, um, they've, they've let me stay. And <laughs> they forgot about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's all credit to the fans. They've, they've been mm. so kind to me. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge nerd. Mm. And when I don't like something, I remember, I remember, uh, did you ever see the show Angel? There's Buffy. Yeah. Yeah. I With love Buffy. The spin-off of Buffy. Yes. Fantastic. I love Buffy. I loved Angel. Same. And I remember when Angel ended, I was so mad. And there was like a letter writing campaign. And I, it was like <laughs> postcards. And I was I, I was at a, a comic book store. I'm like, give me one of those postcards, you know? <laughs> and uh, and um, so I know because I'm that guy, like I get it. If you don't, if people don't like things, you can get crucified. And yeah. I've had that happen to me in in animation and live action stuff. Yeah, that's uh, crazy, man. You, yeah. I, see, I see on your Twitter, yeah. you only receive love. Everybody yeah. is happy. Uh, I don't know anyone who <laughs> tried the book who doesn't like it a lot. It's really. overwhelming, the love that, and, and it's hard, it's because I feel like there's a lot to live up to, but um, I've been having so much fun, and I determined a long time ago with Wally, especially what I had said was like, here's a character that's kind of been beaten up a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to make a, a kind of a family friendly comic mm -hmm. that I could give to my daughters to read or somebody that's old can enjoy a very throwback, just fun comic book. You just go mm -hmm. adventure, adventure. And, and, um, and they were like, yeah, sure. Uh, and so they, they, they've been kind of let me um, get away with, with stuff and occasionally step in and say, you can't do that. And I'm like, you know, uh, but it's been really fun. Mm -hmm. That's something I really want to, to touch on. It's an, it's an important thing. Your book is, I think, what is lacking a lot in, uh, in comic books nowadays. You, you said it just now. It's a family book. It's about a family. It's for families. Kids can enjoy it. Adults like me, I'm 42. I'm loving the book. Oh, good. I know I can give it to a little kid. He can read it and enjoy it too. It's, it's incredible that it's so rare to, to have that kind of books. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, was it easy to, to make it that way? Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, it's, I've heard people, more and more people saying that they, they it's an easy book for them to give to kids that come in. Um, that's my, that's my goal because mm -hmm. comics are expensive. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of things that get your attention, like video games and mm -hmm. movies and television. So, Spending a lot of money on something that you read in a couple minutes is is kind of a high bar, um, but but it's fun because it's a, a totally different artwork. It's a great hobby, but I really I really like when I was a kid. It, it, there's a difference. There's like you, you know my friends would have like Mickey Mouse comics or something, and I didn't care about that. <laughs> I wanted to read something that was exciting and felt like it was sort of adultish without being adultish. Like it wasn't like mm. tons of blood and, you know, tons of like stuff that if my mom picked it up, she wouldn't be like, ah, how dare you, you know? <laughs> uh, but it was still fun to read and it felt like it wasn't a kitty book. Yeah, And that's the difference. I think there's kitty books mm. and there's like adult books, but like, I think there's a gap yeah. in, 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 that's why I loved Super Sons because I felt like, it, it was like these kids, but they were operating in kind of the adult continuity and it was fun and exciting, you know? Um, and so I hope, I hope, I hope more books do that because I yeah. think it's, I think it's important for the business because we're all aging out. We're all getting older, but we have to bring in more young readers or, I mean, look at my daughter reads Dogman or, 
all these crazy stuff. That the sales positive. of Dogman are incredible. Crazy. And same thing with manga, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, tons of people operate because to a degree, some of them are fairly chaste or whatever. And it's just mm -hmm. kind of exciting and weird. And, um, and I just think if you're dealing in the world of superheroes, you should have something for everybody. Of and course. it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that that's wrong. Like having some violent thing. It means no, just have different options, you know? Mm. Um, and okay. so the flash, I really wanted to do that. I'm talking about that. You're talking about super sons. For me, it was a mystery. Uh, for years, I've said, how did, how does Warner not have a show about super sons? I know. It would be such a crazy thing to have a show about super sons for the kids and that you can watch too with a book that goes with the show, it will be incredible. And I was so happy when I learned that you were working on a super son movie. It's yes. just fantastic. Yes. I, um, my friend, uh, Rick, Rick and I, um, Rick, Rick, we've done like 10 movies together and, um, he's a producer over there, a great artist. And it was a long time ago. We were doing Lego movies mm. and he, like, I think we had just finished Lego Aquaman or something. And he was like, we got to do this. And he had shown me the Super Sons book, and I had never, I hadn't read it. Um, and I was, and I love Tomasi, like, yeah, he's one of my favorites when he was doing Green Lantern Corps and some of the others. I just like, he's my favorite. So I was reading it, I was like, this is so good. And, um, and so we asked if we could do it, and they said, no, they, they absolutely refused to let us do it. <laughs> they said that, um, uh, there were plans to do it as like a big, big theatrical thing. And okay. we're like, oh, we're so angry. But we kept talking about it and we kept coming up with like I would I I would call Rick, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? And he'd be like, Oh my gosh, that's stupid. That's great. Like, oh, this would be cool. And so so it years went by. And then finally, I, again, I think it was because Warner Brothers like shifted owners and stuff. There was this weird window where Rick was <laughs> Rick was in a, a meeting and they were talking about another movie, and he just said, You know, Jeremy and I have been trying to do the Super Sons thing for ages. Could we do it? And they and they go, uh, I don't think so. And then suddenly they called somebody and they're like, Yeah, I guess you can. And we knew we knew we better get and I had but I had the whole idea I had the outline done the next day. It was like, here it is. We already know this movie. We've been talking about it for years. And it and I really wanted it to be this heartfelt, like rated G, like iron giant thing. And they said they couldn't do it rated g it had to be pg-13 and i said what that's crazy but then they said one of my producers jim he said no think of it as like just change it enough so it's like a 1980s pg movie you know where i was mm -hmm. like oh okay that makes sense like monster squad or whatever those are the movies i love you know like yeah. goonies whatever and so we added a little bit of stuff like the the starro coming out of the mouth and then crawling mm -hmm. up on the eye and it's just It's really fun. John and Damien are absolutely some of my favorite characters. Yeah. It's it's got so much of my heart in in that movie, and I'm I'm really thrilled for people to see it. I think I and the, and the animation style. It's funny. The trailer uh, didn't show how dynamic it is as much okay. as I think it is when you see the movie. And the music's great. And I can't spoil anything, but it's <laughs> I really really enjoyed it. And I I'm. Uh, I wish that John was still a kid so yeah. that, you know, he could interact with uh, Jay and Maxine and Ira in, in my book, you know, uh, because I've slowly been building this other, like, super okay. kids, you know, <laughs> clearly off to the side. That was one of my questions about that with Maxine, Jay, and, uh, and Iris. Yeah. And it, it was so obvious. You were, you were building something little by little, and it's fantastic. I want it. Are there other kids you want to add to that mix? Say it again. Are there other kids you want to add to that mix? Yeah, yeah, I, there are, and um, I have okay. a plan for it, um, and I know what I want to do, and I've mm -hmm. I've also sort of started building their um, rogues gallery a little bit. So my mm -hmm. daughter and I wrote an issue where yeah. you know Wally and and his daughter went on a thing, and it was Doctor Nightmare, and Doctor Nightmare is totally a creation of my daughter's. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be great if he's part of, you know, he wants, 
he doesn't like these kids, right? I mean, because he really doesn't like Ira at all, like, you know? <laughs> and um, the same thing with Knives Maroney, like the, yeah. in the last, I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to add him to this little cadre of bad guys. And hopefully someday they'll all kind of, um, like, ideally in my world, this is how I, uh, this is how I thought about The Flash is when I took over, one of the reasons I did the plot I did is because I wanted to, I wanted to kind of show all the speedsters that mm -hmm. are operating the DC universe. And although Wally's jumping into them, we as an audience are suddenly getting reacquainted with what that, that mm -hmm. world looks like. And then from there, I want to take Wally on some adventures and bring in their kids slowly and bring in the bring in Linda a little bit with obviously with her gaining powers and and then and then just start building that out so that I can I can start I was always working toward one minute war in my head so that mm. okay by that time we all kind of know who these characters are and then we can really kind of do interesting things with them during during this like really explore them a little bit yeah. To explain to, uh, to people, One Minute War is your, the next big arc coming in your run. And it's a, an extraterrestrial invasion by aliens who, uh, who all use the Speed Force. Their technology yeah. uses the Speed Force. Yeah. So the Speedsters are the only one able to react to that invasion. Right. Right. So it's an all war in one minute for the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah, it's crazy. I love the idea. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah I, I, um, it, it was, it was, it came about because I wanted to do one thing in the book, and they said no. <laughs> and I said, Ugh. but I really, I really liked. There was a, a, a kernel, and I just kept thinking about it. And then suddenly, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what it is. And um, I've written it. I've written most of it already, and um, I'm excited. I think mm. that people. I think that everybody needs to know that a it's already done and b just stick with it <laughs> because you know I I could see people getting mad about things and then I'm like but just stick with it just stick with it just finish it and if you're still mad at me afterwards and great you can be mad at me but like I I just want people to give it a chance because I think it's going to be um I think it's just going to be I think it's just going to be different uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be different, but it's going to be fun. I mean, it's going to be exciting. And um, I will tell you, I will spoil, not spoil something, but like there's an issue with uh, Kid Flash and, and Impulse that I, I keep Ooh. giggling over a lot. And uh, and I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And the fact that they're letting me put it out twice a month is another part of it. As we get towards That's 800. Fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, and as we get to 800 and... I pitch them what I want to do for 800, but who knows? I mean, this mm. is the thing. I don't own this, and they could get rid of me tomorrow. <laughs> and I hope, the, not. I hope not too. And 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 the level of um, that's why I think we all get kind of crazy about pirating comics and stuff like that mm. because it is. It, I mean, a thousand comics yeah. sold can, can be the difference difference. between yeah, it canceled or not canceled. And, course, uh, and it's the same thing in animation. We would get criticism all the time. It's like, all you do is do Batman. All you do is do Batman. And then we go, okay, well, we're going to do this Wonder Woman uh, JSA thing or this thing or this Green Lantern thing, and it doesn't sell well. Mm -hmm. And then the higher-ups who don't care about this stuff are like, well, it doesn't sell well. And you're like, yeah. no, give us another chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's often what I say to, to, to people. You have that expression in English, uh, put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. That's it. We love that medium. There are people who are like, I don't like comics nowadays, uh, things yeah. like that. There are comics for everyone. Everyone. Give a chance. Be curious. There are com comics you want to, to help. You want to make stay in stores. So yeah. just give a chance. There are things for you. It's, yeah. and for all the people, who say that there are no fun comics uh, with that uh, with that uh, silver edge craziness? There's flash. There's a flash. <laughs> Go. There is flash. And yeah. as you often say, as long as you're on the flash, we're good with Wally. So we have to, yeah. we have to save Wally. It's for Wally's life. We have to do it. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's the threat. Because if I leave, who knows? You know. Uh, yeah. I 
I, and, and that's the thing. The Flash is, to me, the Flash is the most powerful being in the universe. Yeah. Like, I'm like, if you can move at the speed of light, like nothing can stop you, really. And so, so it becomes a, a trial to write him. Mm. So in my mind, it's like if he gets if he gets knocked out or whatever, it's usually when he's not paying attention. You know, it's like he's looking that way and, he, and somebody hits you from behind because he's not constantly moving at super speed. Yeah. But I the, the 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 joy of it is it's almost the Doctor Who of it is, but he can go anywhere and he can do anything. And there was that issue where he takes Kid Flash on his route. That's and you great. realize, oh, he can go to Skataris and he's like over here and he's doing this and he's doing that. And his world is so much bigger than I think people give it credit for. Yeah. Because as a kid, I didn't, I didn't read The Flash very much because I felt like he was inaccessible in some ways. I'm like, what's this guy with a boomerang going to do? And then I <laughs> and then you then I got into kind of the older, I guess it would be the Silver Age Flash, where mm -hmm. you would have these great covers where it's like, his head is really giant or he's like gained a bunch of weight or whatever. I'm like, what is happening in this book? You know? And, and then obviously Mark Wade really uh, filled out the emotional aspect of Wally. And then Jeff came in and turned up the dial on the rogues and all this stuff. And then Josh, you know, ran the gamut for so long. Um, it's been really fun. And, and again, like working with Jeff on flashpoint has been a thrill. He's been incredibly, incredibly nice and learning tricks and trade. And Josh Williamson has, been nothing but a cheerleader for me mm. and uh i i feel really lucky like i you know and i met mart wade and he lives a couple blocks away from me and we've had lunch a couple of times and it's just like mark wade tell me what i have to do <laughs> you went uh, you went to a signing to meet yeah, to, to yeah, I, was a yeah. <laughs> i was on twitter and i was like mark wade is down this i'd like grab my keys and like i gotta go honey i just <laughs> ran out and and i felt like such an idiot and i walk up Oh, hi, hi, Mark, Mark, Mark Wade, uh, Mr. Wade. My name is Jeremy Adams. I, I'm writing the Flash. Oh, and he's like, oh, I love your book. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, inside I'm screaming my head off, uh, like, oh, that's very kind of you, you know. So <laughs> I, I'm thrilled about it. I mean, it's been it's been really fun. Yeah. On, so on that first one that yep. uh, we can already find in France, on the number two is already also yep. also available. available. How did how uh, did you come to the idea to start it with that quantum leap uh, kind of story? And yeah. I love that in the first issue, you manage to put dinosaurs. It's already <laughs> a so nerdy thing to do, and a speedster dinosaur. <laughs> That's yeah. just great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, that uh, that at the time the editor is no longer there, but I remember him going like. A speed dinosaur? That's the coolest thing ever. He's like, he didn't even want to read anything else. He was like, we're in, we're in. I'm like, okay. Um, it, how I decided it was because um, I wanted, I, it, the idea that the speed force is everywhere and that these guys are just conduits of this thing oh. and you could use it to travel or whatever. I For me, it was like, it was acclimating back to Wally. And the big thing that I knew is I wanted to kind of in the in continuity make sense of what happened in Heroes in Crisis in a way that uh, made me excited to write Wally again. Like, I think Tom King's incredible. Mm. I think all the stuff he does is incredible. But for me, writing Wally, I wanted to make him, you know, I, I'm just I'm just selfish. It's like I, <laughs> I want to be this blameless mm. hero. So, ha ha, you know. And um, and I knew I wanted to get to that point. That was going to be the end point. And so reverse engineering, it was just kind of like, I also, as the writer for The Flash, I wanted to kind of like dip my toe in these different characters that I knew, yeah. hopefully, I hoped that I'd be on long enough that I would be able to talk, I'd be able to do something with Jay. I would be able to do something with, you know, Jesse Quick or whatever. And so it became this really fun thing of just kind of like, Hey, this is great. We can, here's the machine. He's lost in the speed force. We don't know why there's a surge happening. That's going to end up. And that, that was kind of the main thing, that surge that came out of Wally during. It, crisis. Touch, like, it, that's touches, so weird. it touches on the, I love that you, that you use the fact that Wally is the one with the strongest connection to the force. Right. right. 
And so that that was the thing because in here, here's in crisis when he explodes and he kills all those people. I was like, well, that's weird. I don't remember seeing him have that power before that something like that happened where it just explodes out of him. I and mean, maybe it has. I just didn't. I didn't recall it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, maybe he didn't. Maybe that was something else. And that that was kind of like how I started spiraling back. Now originally, uh, I don't think it was going to be Savitar. It, 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 I was mm-hmm. pitching some really crazy stuff. And um, and then my editor was like, I, maybe it should be Savitar. I'm like, fine, you know. And then I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense compared to the stuff that I was, you know, yeah, I was throwing out there. But it was great. And as a comic fan, like, <laughs> I got to work with these incredible artists. I, you know, I never, I mean, all the, every issue was like a different artist. And Kevin McGuire, like my, like one of my, yeah. That's what I mean. I I've met That's crazy. JM. Yeah, I met JM a couple times and who's the nicest person ever. If you're not following him on Twitter, it's like JM is like a font of information. We all pray we could have a job like that. And McGuire though was doing so the art of JLI was like everything to me. Oh yeah. And when they said, "Well, you're writing so much so far ahead, Jeremy, that I think we can get Kevin McGuire." I'm like, don't play with my emotions, you know? <laughs> and then he started sending back the art and I'm just like, I was like, it doesn't matter if you fire me today or tomorrow because this happened. Like this is, <laughs> this exists now, you know? Yeah. And, and all the jokes played like, you know, Wally super oh, slapping. It's fantastic. You know? <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny to see Legend of Doom so like that. <sighs> I think it's funny. And I wrote it. I was like, ah, but it's like seeing the art is like, and I knew it was going to be him drawing it. So it was like, this is even better. <laughs> you know, like I can, I, I'm so familiar with this work in my head. I'm like, oh, this will be fantastic. Um, you know, on a lot of on a lot of runs, it can be very disturbing for me when there uh, when there are changes of artists. It's yeah, something yeah, yeah. I don't like usually. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. In your run, it never does that. Yeah, I don't, I, and I wonder if it's just because it's like. It's crazy. You know, we're going to be over here for Ollie, you know, uh, Barry and, and Mr. Terrific. And then we leap into this other mm-hmm. thing. I tried to make it so it wasn't like we're going back all the time. So it m- maybe a little more subtle. But I agree. Uh, I've yeah. been and I've been doing a lot of stuff with Fernando. Obviously, I'm, I'm on K has been doing the Dark Christ stuff. Fernando is my guy for a lot of the normal um, arc stuff. And I, I just don't understand how they do this thing. They have, we have a we have an issue coming out that I, I think I, I wrote so long ago. I wrote before they asked me if I wanted to tie into Dark Crisis. And I was like, absolutely, I want to tie in. So I wrote this wrestling issue that will come out in October. And it's it's so fun. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so I, I don't understand. It's your first first run. Yeah. Real run. You made, uh, you made two stories uh, that were really good for uh, Future State, Black Adam and uh, Black Racer. But it's your first run really on a, on a character. And you manage a lot of things that usually not every writer uh, managed to do. Like your tie-ins. You had several tie-ins uh, for uh, bigger events. It doesn't feel only like tie-ins. It's still a flashbook. And it's not, right. oh, damn, I have to read that issue. Okay, it's not the story <laughs> I wanted to read about. But, oh, okay. But no. <laughs> there are always elements that make the story go forward. How right. is it? Uh, I don't know. So, so, I mean, like, Josh, Josh, told me, Josh was like, I need you to go and find the world with Barry and then break him out of the, you know, break him out of the world. And that was kind of, that was kind of my guideline. So I was like, well, if I got three issues to do this, I really want to break it up with the people and, and again, it was also about with the other speedsters, like giving us character moments and fun stuff with it. Like say like yeah. Jesse Quick and Max, like they're in that that kind of apocalyptic world that's very Mad Max or whatever. And, and if you watch it, you're just, or you read it, you're just like, oh, it's just them fighting these bad guys and stuff. But, but now after the announcement of One Minute War, you realize, oh, uh, the fraction had already come to that planet. Yeah. The fraction and the spire, and they have decimated that planet, and so it makes a little more sense post, post, you know, of that. The same thing with Night Flash and Knives Maroney. It's like I'm having yeah. fun just writing these characters, but I'm also like planting seeds for stuff that's happening later on. 
and three and and i think i just think of it like a tv show um and it's hard though because comics are interesting i was doing like the eclipso arc mm -hmm. um i had so much fun doing the like funny book that you do the you know you get to the it's gem world. Fate. It's yeah incredible. yeah and then you get to gem world and we start doing this stuff well i had written it to be an extra an extra book but oh, yeah. um i had to tie into um uh, war for earth three so i had to condense it so it felt it just felt a little rushed to me at the end but it was still fun it was mm -hmm. fun to bring in jay and ira and they're doing stuff and i was like oh man this is so much fun being able to play these different characters and then suddenly linda you know is got powers and you're like oh my gosh it's the same thing with the annual i didn't i i was honestly i was just like i can't believe that me do this annual <laughs> because it's not it's you know it's not about the flash but but the flash isn't about the flash either it's about mm -hmm. his family it's about those characters that's what that's what i'm finding compelling about it mm -hmm. and and you know these characters in this family and now it's like this family of super powered heroes and and friends and what does that mean and and it's the same thing with mr terrific like originally i, I love was, yeah i love the voice uh, you give to him well that's the thing like i originally i was i i was like hey can i use ted cord and they're like no <laughs> and i was like okay who can i use and they're like mr terrific i was like yeah and then i just started i fell in love with that character because i'm like oh i'm gonna make him buckaroo bonsai i'm gonna like He's gonna have like all these companies because he's super smart. So he's like, he's got potato chip companies and he's got this and he's got this and it's all funneling so that he can do all this other stuff. And I, and then he's kind of cool. So I was like, oh, this is, this is really fun to be able to use him as a reoccurring character because I think he's really neat. And I had, I had been reading the terrific. I love that book. It's so good. It's yes. so good. And I, I was like, oh, the Trifix is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, I, 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 I have more stuff with him uh, cool. coming up, but um, uh, I've been having, I've been having a ball because a lot of times he's written very like he's a Vulcan, like yeah. he has no emotions. And when he pulls into the the Jiffy Lube type thing uh, with Wally, and he's got his nice car, and he's like, "Listen, you're gonna come work for me." I, you know, like, like I was like, "Yeah, of course, of course, that's gonna happen." So the only pro the only thing that drives me nuts about the Flash is that it comes out monthly, you know. And I was like, "Ah, there's so many other like, there's all this stuff happening at the lab in my head that I'm like, I've gotta get back to this." But because DC Comics, you know, it'll be like, "Oh, there's a Dark Crisis," and I'm not. I'm a nerd. I want to be part of the crisis too. Let me, you know, if Josh is like, you want to do something like, of course I want to do this. <laughs> that's like, that's like a four month gap between the story that I had been telling. Right. Yeah. And, um, and even the stuff with the, um, you know, uh, Gregory Wolf who runs Einhardt's penitentiary, who, um, as far as we know, used to be, you know, hey, I thought he was convicted of something and he went crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we'll find out, you know, but <laughs> I will find out. I'm 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 looking forward to seeing if we find out, you know. <laughs> and that's hard because I'm so far ahead. I'm like, oh man. You have put a lot of setup in your books. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I try to pay it off. I mean, I try to not I try well, yeah, to pay yeah. it off like every couple months. Like so you can the reason I do that is I I want new readers to be able to jump on. But so it's not it. it's not frustrating. It's really it just makes you want mm. to go further in the book. You want to to know how it will develop. So it's great. I love that kind of uh, that kind of setup. And you were talking about the, the annual. It's a super cute issue. We learn more about Linda yeah. about her, it's crazy because we learn more about her vision of life in the same time we learn more about her vision of her use bond because there's a right. lot of that in that issue and we learn more about Wally West uh how he see how he sees his wife is great yeah. how did that idea come for uh, for the annual because well, it's not something you see very often yeah. have that story in the story <laughs> for, for yeah the annual. I I like trying to uh, to twist stories a little bit in my head so that I'm not bored I, I you know I I'm I'm trying inevitably to do some, I'm trying to write stuff that maybe we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all seen gimmicks and different things. It's just, 
I want to do something different a little bit, at least as much as I can, you know? I mean, it's, there's no dip, there's no real different. Everybody's done everything. <laughs> so what this is, I knew, um, I knew that I wanted Linda, and it was no offense, it wasn't offense to anything, it was just like, mm. how many reporters are dating or married to superheroes? And I was like, I think that, you know, they can be different too. And, yeah. and, um, uh, I knew, I knew people that were in journalism. I knew people like me that you want to write everything. And, and, and I figured, Oh, that's, that's an easy push is to have her, you know, move into a place where she wants to write something. Cause so many of us want to write something. And, mm. and I thought it would be, it'd be fun for me to write the character as, as like, Hey, she's, she's trying a new career because she's been a journalist but she's also been like a scientist and stuff like that in, in flash continuity. And I thought this would be fun. Mm. And so originally I was just going to do, she was going to do a trashy romance novel. And <laughs> a part of that was because um, I, I had read one and then um, I thought it'd be I, in my head. I was like, Oh, it'd be so funny if the cover was Wally, you know, looking with like Fabio and, and holding her and, and all that stuff. And then, and then it, it started coming due and I was just like, Oh, I remember it was uh, romancing the stone. I thought, Oh, she could be like Kathleen Turner and romancing the stone. It will be a really fun, like she's, she's this novelist, but she gets experience this thing. And then I started writing it and I realized I can't write a romance novel at all. Like, at, like I started writing it and I was like, I don't know what to do. And I freaked out. And, um, but because I had done, I'd done, you know, all this research on Linda, and I had read so much st stuff. I was like, oh. And I was writing my own novel at the time. And I was like, I'm using so much of my own personal stuff in this. What if, I mean, here's this woman that has gone through everything. Yeah. Like she met Wally, but he was a porcupine monster originally. And like, <laughs> you know, Cobra was after her and, and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, that should be it. It should be her taking all those experiences and like jam packing it together. But it should be a total twist within the story where you're like, it's a romance novel and then suddenly it's a sci-fi nerd novel and you're like well this this will be great and then it just it all just exploded out of me and i i wrote it um but i also am like you when i pick an annual up i do want it to actually i want it to be fun it, it doesn't have to necessarily be consequential but i want it to link back to the main series i want there to be mm -hmm. something so yeah. obviously we have the beginning where we talk about uh, Gregory Wolf and what's going on and she's talking. Because, oh, that was the other thing. I was trying to reveal her, her, uh, uh, she was going to have a conversation with Wally about her powers like four months ago. And then, <laughs> and then, and then it kept getting tripped up because it was like, Oh, well, you got to do this crossover. Like, okay. And I was like, but I wanted to have like a meaningful conversation. So it's very meta. In fact, <laughs> what yeah. happened to the book? <laughs> yeah. So then it's like, okay, they had the conversation. And then at the end, it's like, oh, oh, is this why you have powers? And that's like a big cliffhanger to bring you back to the, the regular series. But it's also very heartfelt. And it was also, uh, it was very much me writing a love letter to my wife mm -hmm. to the point that like I asked them to do a dedication, but they, they said they couldn't do a dedication. I was like, what? <laughs> um, but whatever, comics are weird. Um, so, so much of it because, because I'm married. I have two kids. Wally's yeah. married. He has two kids. He's probably the most well-adjusted character mm -hmm. in comics, right? Everybody else doesn't isn't married generally, and and they don't have kids. And um, he's one of the few characters that is kind of just progressing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, it was really fun. And I and I remember somebody at Comic Con, one of the people at DC, is like I. I I said something like, yeah, I don't know if people are going to like it. He goes, Jeremy, I don't know if anybody's going to like it. I never think anybody's going to like it. Like, I read your stuff, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that vote of confidence. <laughs> and you talked about it, uh, Suna. So you, as, you, as you're saying, you have two, uh, two daughters, and you wrote one of the issues with your older one with uh, eight. How was it? To work with your daughter. It was amazing. <laughs> she's super smart and she's very creative. And I took a whiteboard. I got well. First, we went to the store and I got tons of snacks. <laughs> and and then we got a whiteboard and I broke it up into three acts. Mm -hmm. And I showed her how 
I did it like we do television generally. And I was like, oh, and, but she had drawn all these pictures and she's like, wouldn't it be great if he had a hat that like pulled out the nightmares? I'm like, what? That's amazing, you know? <laughs> and um, we had just gone to a daddy daughter dance. So it was like really easy to be like, oh, you know, and ask her questions. Some of her ideas were like too crazy or, mm. and I'd have to pull her back. What's really fun about it is, uh, you know, she sent all that artwork to uh, Christian. I think it was Christian, and and he got it. And then he just he did all the he did all those pieces of art, and and she was just. And then I paid her, and she still <laughs> has like she has been like just barely spending that money. And then my youngest daughter's like, "This is garbage. I want it." And so I was sitting there the other day, and my little one comes in, and she's like. All right, the Flash is gonna fight a jelly bean man. And then I'm like, oh man. I so I told her, I go, listen, you when you're a little older, we'll we'll write one together. But um, because she just wants the money. I don't even... <laughs> that's fantastic. And that one is in the first uh, in the yeah. first issue. And in the second one, there's the issue with Dr. Fate. How did come that idea? For people, you have to read it. You really have to read it. <laughs> It's a book that needs you. The Flash and Dr. Fate need you. Without you, they can't go further in their adventure. How yeah. did that idea come? And I love how you, you're new to comics and you play with the medium, with the object itself. Yeah. You try things, you experiment. How did that idea come to you for that uh, issue? Um, it, it started with, um, because I have, I had little kids and a lot of little kid books have stuff like that. Mm. They have like little fun gimmicky things. And I, and I, Originally, in my head, I was like, oh, gosh, I would love to read a book where I open the page and Doctor, it was originally in my head, like Doctor Strange. It was like, wouldn't it be cool if Doctor Strange turned around and like, by the hoary host of Gahagath, you know, you need to help me or whatever. And I was like, oh, that would be cool. And I just thought about that. But then when they, when they gave me the flash, and obviously I'm writing comics, now I'm, now I'm writing comics and I've got a, a laundry list of things that I think would be <laughs> cool to do. And it was, it was more about how do I get the flash to gem world? And, and then it was like, oh, well, okay. Amethyst is on gem world and she's kind of magic. And then it was like, oh, yeah, oh, magic. And then Eclipso. And I was just thinking about the magic stuff. And then I was like, oh, Dr. Fate could grab him. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is it. This is the chance, you know? And, um, and I, I called my editor. I was like, listen, this is really silly, but I think it'd be really fun. And it was frustrating in the, in, uh, in so much that I was like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta ask the digital people to tell people to lock their screen, mm -hmm. you know, and that didn't happen. And then it would drive me nuts. It's like, Oh, turn the page. And then there would be like a commercial and I'd be like, yeah, in the US edition. Oh. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I, and I, it made me crazy because I, I specifically designed it and I literally printed out pages and pasted them together. And I <laughs> took a video of myself turning it to send to my editor to make sure they're they're paged correctly and they're turned correctly because it was it was deceptively hard because if it flipped upside down, then this page becomes this page. And um, so I'm excited because the American trade of that comes out in December. Mm -hmm. And then you got it, obviously. I'm excited for people to actually experience it mm. within the book. Uh, but it was so much fun. And I was like an idiot blowing at my book. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that was, the, that was the other thing. I didn't want it to just be this. Then it was like, you ha did you find the objects that you need to push in the correct order? And so many people were like, what? You know. And in fact, when Fernando sent me the art, I was like, I don't think you put the, ob I don't think you put the, the shapes in there. And he said, no, they're in there. I'm like, Really? And I had to go back and it was like so hard to find. But then when you see them, they're like, it's, it's right there. It's glowing. How did I not, how did I not see that? Which is great, which is part of yeah. the fun. But that's, that's also something. There's a lot of time. I think it's because maybe because of your work in animation, uh, you really use your artist uh, in the best way. Like uh, when they're in, uh, in Gem World, I had to go back in my book to yeah. see, but when did the Justice, uh, Justice League Dark uh, became uh, possessed by Eclipso? Yeah. And it's just little hint. So, 
and we were talking about the price of a book and you give a second life to the book you, you give right. more time to the life of the book because there are so much details and you let the artist tell a part of the story yeah which yeah. is fantastic i mean fernando he like directly translate translates my brain he's so mm. good i love him so much and all the artists i've been lucky to work with the way that I look at it is, I mean, there it's a visual medium. Yeah. Like they're doing so much of everything. Um, the least I can do is try to make it fun for them mm -hmm. to uh, draw. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case with like Roger Cruz is doing one minute war and there's a lot of talking. And then I'm like, okay, I've got to make it up to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by doing something explosive or make some character do something because I, I could imagine if I was a uh, an artist, I wouldn't want it just to be talky talky. I would want to do yeah. something um, <clears throat> fun. And like Amon K, I remember when I had sent him the script for um, the first of the Dark Crisis tie-ins and he sent me back um, a splash page of Apocalypse Barry driving this awesome muscle car and it was so rad. And he was like, I would do a whole book on this. And I was like, oh, good. Cause I just want to make them happy. You know, like I want to make the artists happy. Cause they, like I said, they do so much of it. And it's crazy. just that panel, uh, when, when there are all those, uh, those little monsters that come on yeah. them, oh, yeah. there are so many of them. Oh, I, dude, I what are you doing like to yourself? Couple, <laughs> I said, I said like a couple of gremlins or something. And next thing I know, I get this page and there's like 600. I'm like, are you insane you know and i like i love it but i'm just like that's crazy i couldn't draw one of those and here you are drawing like so many so many and then jeremy cox who does uh you know the colors it's like well buddy you got a color on. <laughs> like like good luck you know uh I i'm i am constantly impressed and with fernando he does this level of scale to everything where even when um like when we did the uh the the originally the spear was supposed to land this the glaive yeah my original pitch was that it was going to have an inscription on it i was just going to mess with the thor it was going to say like whoever is unworthy shall lift the mm -hmm. glaive um and we and he was already drawing and then suddenly we saw that marvel did something like that with the black knight like came out i was like stupid like flipping over <laughs> tables like this is a, so um but then we're like oh that's cool the influence of it is going to draw people in but fernando suddenly it's like you know you turn the page and it's like there's 20 bad guys yeah running toward and it's just like oh my goodness uh you didn't need to go that hard you know uh, and i always tell them like you don't have to draw you can you i'll you can do whatever you want man like i'll i'll write around you and he's like no no uh he'll, he'll, he's so humble he'll like uh i don't think this is my best work and i'm like are you? and he'll send something that's like the greatest thing ever i'm like are you insane are you insane and i'm screaming at him. and so i asked him to send me some of his original artwork he sent me the first appearance of uh gold beetle from the black adam that we had done together and then he had uh sent me a dr fate thing oh. from uh uh the the dr fate uh you know one so i i'm impressed by all of them it's a detail but i love how uh, on the panel when dr fate talk to us yeah he he goes out of the panel and yes. when Flash realizes that there are people the same yeah. but just yeah. that one he starts <laughs> going out of the panel and you were talking about uh, roger cruz i also uh, want to say to people read robin by yes. Joshua williamson uh, in yeah. the second volume uh there's the work of Cruz, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's a great, and he's great. Yeah. And Josh did a great, ready. like, gimmick. Like, I'm a sucker for martial arts. Yeah. Uh, like, I love you it. You Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. Mortal Kombat. And there's a Batman uh, Soul of the Dragon I did with Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. great. And it's like, you give me a tournament of martial artists, I'm in. And Josh had a great gimmick with, like, the Lazarus Island. I was like, come on, man. That's a great idea. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Cruz did a and great job. Did I understand well? Did you have to meet Mark Decascos? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so <laughs> I, I lost my mind. And I, mean, I, will do. Like I, said, I, I was, was such a big fan of, of you. I'm just a huge fan, huge fan. And I, try, I was trying to keep it cool, but I have no ability <laughs> to keep it cool, you know. And um, 
And when we were talking about like casting and I was like, Mark DeCoscos, Michael Jai White, like I was like, let's just get like real legit martial artists that could do this thing, you know, if we could translate it. And um, he comes in, he's super, super sweet. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a big fan. And he says, uh, oh, thanks. I go, I don't think you understand. <laughs> I was like, uh, my brother and I brought only the strong home and we started trying to do capoeira from this thing. And then it was crying Freeman. And then I, and it's like, you know, brother, of the wolf, you know, Pacta de Lupes, you know, like uh, brother of the wolf. And I was like, and, I, and then I just started rolling. I'm like, and then there was this, and he's like, oh, you're like a real fan. I'm like, I'm a real fan, man. <laughs> and because Jim uh, Krieg, who's my mentor and I've worked at, uh, tons of stuff with, is absolutely doesn't get embarrassed by anything. He brought some nunchucks and he's like, let's get some pictures. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Him and I have this picture with Mark DeCosco's where we've got nunchucks and Mark's posing. And I'm like, this is the greatest day of my life. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the stuff that I live for. That's just, it's just, it's, it really is amazing. I, that's, that's the thing about being a writer and, and, and if you can, if you can do it, it there's a lot of fun to be had. Like when I, um, when I was working on Supernatural, um, I knew that Christian Kane, I love Christian Kane's music, but I love Christian Kane because he was an angel as like, you know, worked for Wolfram and Hart. And uh, he, he, he's always in like leverage and stuff. And I knew he was friends with Jensen and they thought all my other pitches were crazy. So they said, hey, I said, what if we did a Roadhouse episode and, you know, we can bring in Christian Kane and, and, and it was like, I get to meet these people that I love and I'm trying to keep it cool. Like I said, I try to keep it cool. I'm not cool. So it's like, oh, they're coming in they're doing this thing that you, you can't believe they're doing. They're reading your, you know, they're acting out your words mm -hmm. or um, they're drawing panels like Mark McGuire. I mean, not Mark McGuire, Kevin McGuire. And it's like, it's insane because you get to meet your heroes and 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 you get to work with them and that's that's so it's such a joy. Yeah, because you wrote uh, I think sixteen episodes on uh, Supernatural. From what I've seen, uh, I, I wrote yeah I wrote the Scooby Natural with, uh, with yeah the, one of my favorite ones. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. And I had been pitching that um, for a while at as a Scooby Doo. And then my my good friend uh, was working on Supernatural, and he became the showrunner. And Jim was like, "We should pitch it as a live action." I was like, "I think we have." And then I called him up, and, and within like a half an hour, it was all it was all set in stone, and and that really blew up. And then I, and then they asked me to come on staff the last season, and they said, "We just want you to come up with weird ideas." I'm like, "Great, here are a bunch." And they were like, "Those are too weird," so <laughs> so I had to tone it down. And so we did this Roadhouse episode where, you know, Jensen and Christian Kane sang like the Dukes of Hazard theme song, you know, <laughs> up on stage, and and then uh, and then an episode where there's a um, there's like a wood a, a wood nymph that's like the housekeeper of the uh, it's called the Last Remember. Holiday, and 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 it's really just a funny episode mm -hmm. of like they get all these holidays and they let me use like the Ghostbuster music, and I was like. <laughs> This is great, you know, and I'm just throwing stuff in because it because and that came about again. I was on set and the stand-in for Jensen was like uh you know, they never really explained a lot of stuff in this uh in the men of letters bunker. I was like, Yeah. And we were talking about it. I was like, oh, they should we should figure out. I was like, Yeah. I was like, I'm totally gonna do that. So then when we were shooting it, I, I see him, I go, dude, this is because we were talking about this thing, you know, and it, it was so cool. You know, you get your ideas wherever you can but that's a fantastic show i love it and you worked also i learned that on the green lantern animated show i love that thing which one it's so good the green, Lan uh, the yeah, green lantern that was my first that was my first credit ever it's so good uh, man I, it's, it's okay incredible you see you see the ears on the on the aesthetic aspect but it's so well written it's such a good show so good. with friends of mine uh, who also have youtube channels we all love that show it's, yeah. it's crazy jim jim um krieg was the producer kind of like story editor on it and ernie altbacher who's done a bunch of animated stuff was i think he was a staff writer on it and Giancarlo mm -hmm. volpe who did a bunch of anim you know art and stuff and they were consistently like 
that was my first job for credit and I wrote one and I wrote another one, but like every time I would go in there, they were just, they were giggling because it was always about like, Oh, we're going to make people cry, you know? And, and, <laughs> and they were like having so much fun, like creating these characters. And, and even I was like, Oh my gosh, I and razor like, Oh, how could you do this? To me? You know, <laughs> it was like, it was so good. It was so deep for such a yeah. kid, like a kid show it was so deep. And it was, yeah, so you don't deep. expect that. Yeah. And no one really, like it didn't, it wasn't watched, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then it and then it's gained momentum over time. And then it was on HBO Max. I don't know if it still is, but like, it it's kind of gotten a, a new life. I mean, it was that and Young Justice, and they were part of the same block, you know. Mm -hmm. But we've had that happen. Like Justice League Action was, we got to do, you know, I got to do like four of those. And it was so fun, but it was on at like six a.m. on a Saturday, and no one saw them. But they're really fun uh, episodes, uh, and, and and get to play in the DC universe a lot, which is really yeah. it's always great. Yeah, and I I have to 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 ask you. So, how was it to work with Jeff freaking Jones on oh. Flashpoint Beyond? And I I have to be honest with you, when I heard about a Flashpoint Beyond, I was like, okay, of course. That's what publishers do. Of yeah, course, yeah. there's a sequel to something like Flashpoint, of course. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I did. And it's good. It's yeah. really good. I love oh, thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Tim and I had come up with an idea um, involving Flashpoint. And we thought we, we had discovered something that was kind of interesting. And, and uh, we kind of pitched, oh, that's a great idea. But I think because Tim and I were so new, they were like, <laughs> you know, why would we do this with you type thing? Um, and then Cotton, uh, my editor, knew Jeff and said, well, why don't we ask Jeff if he wants to be involved? Would that be okay with you? And Tim and I are like, <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, there's no way he's going to say yes. And, and, and so he said yes. And then we met him at a, a, at a restaurant. And I was just like, I can't believe I'm sitting here with Jeff Johns because I've read, you know, everything. Back in the day, it was like, that was it. It was like, that dude was revolutionizing all of DC Universe, and he couldn't be nicer. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we had such a ball, and we got along so well, and then it, and it changed from our initial, what we thought it was going to be, because it really is his universe, right? And mm -hmm. so we would go to his office, and we'd break it like a television show, and we were just having so much fun uh, changing it and turning it into different things, and... And then we just started writing and it was, and, and we become fairly friendly, you know, Tim, mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff, Tim and I are really good friends. Yeah. I, we probably talk every day. And so uh, meeting Jeff and get to hang out with Jeff and, and also just kind of like ask him questions and like, how do you do this? And, you know, he has a lot of specific rules that he has for comic books, which are really interesting. So it's been it's been a it's been a dream, and people have been really responding to it. And Zermanico's art is out of control. <gasps> good, it's crazy. Like, you know, it's Russo's crazy. art was amazing for Zero, and then and then Zermanico, and then uh, Mikel, like yeah. getting this art back. You're just like, we don't deserve this. We don't yeah. deserve this. It's so good. I sent the uh, sooner today. I sent the panel with uh, with Thomas Wayne uh, in, in in his Batman costume with the uh, with the Thunder. Uh, yes, just yes. A, I know. It's and, so and beautiful. Tim, Tim specifically had said um, there was a panel in in uh, in the '90s in a Batman cover, Detective Comics cover or something, and he's like, "I love this. Can we do a version of this?" And then, of course, Zermanico <laughs> does his version, and it's just like, "Oh my gosh, it's so good!" And then, uh, you know, I I've only met him in person once, but he's such a cool guy, Mitch uh, Jareds, and. Mm. He's been doing some of the variant covers, and those are incredible too. Like the one where he's, you know, with the trident, and and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine for somebody who just started in comics, being able to like play in all these fields has been incredible. And they'll ask me, they're like, hey, do you want to do this backup eight issue hot girl thing? Yes. Like I, <laughs> I they don't even need to ask me, honestly. I, I like <laughs> they gave me. 
I get it. And then it's like, oh, I turned it in today. And it's like, we just gave you the assignment this morning. I'm like, yeah, I know. But, you know, I'm so excited. <laughs> so it's like, I don't want you. I want you to know that you, you can keep giving me stuff. It's the same thing yeah. at Marvel. I just I just did my first Marvel stuff with like the digital stuff. And it's like, yeah, I would rather have a paper book. But if they ask me if I want to do Marvel stuff, I'm going, yeah. And here you go. You know, this is this will be fun. You want me to do an Iron Man? Then great. You want me to do a Hawkeye? Then great. Great. You know, I'm like, you did, my mind. you did one with Marvel. I did. A, yeah, it's for the the Marvel Infinite. You know how they have yeah. the online thing? Yeah, I know. So I know. It's a Hawkeye one. It's out right now. It's on the Marvel Infinite app. And, okay. um, and it's just funny because it's like it's Clint Barton you know, talking to these kids that go to school and he's talking about all these adventures he's had and these kids are like, mm, uh, you're a guy with a bow, you know, like, I think you're maybe overestimating. Well, there's a kid on another planet that needs a hero to help depose a, a king and suddenly Hawkeye disappears and it's very silly, uh, but it's it's fun because I love Hawkeye and, um, and it has that kind of, sense of humor that i have in in um in the flash but uh it's 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 very small like they're very small they're short short things but i was i jumped at the chance to do something with marvel i would jump at the chance to, you know what I, I mean it's like yeah of course doing all these things i i want i now that i've got the taste for comics i'm like oh i just want to do more give me another book give me anything <laughs> give me more Give me the North miniseries. I'll do anything. Give me the worst character you have. I will take a crack at it. Like, I'm not even joking. And, it, and the things I want to do, it's like, I would love to do a Wonder Woman. I would love to do, uh, there are things that I want to do just because, um, you know, I have daughters. And I want, I did, I did Lego Super, DC Superhero Girls for a long time, yeah. uh, for Le the Lego ones. And I had so much fun doing that and seeing my girls respond to that and, get excited about that is like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I get to brainwash my girls into superheroes. This is going to be great. Yeah, and you also worked uh, on uh, Teen Titans Go versus uh, Teen Titans? Yeah. yeah, Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, and that was kind of like, um, uh, they need me to come in, and the director had, like, in, like, he wanted to figure out something with the Raven character in the middle. So Marley... Uh, Halprin did the most of that stuff and 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 I I came in and just kind of like came up with the unkindness and some of the the Raven stuff and 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 did kind of a punch up and it, it was awesome I mean it's super funny and the guy who directed it is incredibly talented and that just to be able to play with the Teen Titans go gives me a little street cred with the kids you know <laughs> and uh, and so I've done like that a bunch of a bunch of Lego stuff Yeah, uh, Shazam, Aquaman, uh, uh, Monkey, um, Monkey Kid, yeah, Monkey Kid. does some Jurassic <laughs> World stuff, and um, and they've been they've been big fans of mine and big supporters of mine. So it's been it's always fun to do Lego stuff. Everybody knows what Lego is. Yeah. It's like doing Scooby Doo. It's like everybody knows Scooby Doo, and so being able to do some Scooby Doo has always been it's been great too. Lego, for me, they're genius. It's crazy yeah. how they manage to stay relevant uh, with with time passing. They still that enormous franchise. It's just crazy to me. V those guys yeah. are genius. It's uh, and to come back to uh, to uh, to uh, Flashpoint Beyond, I love how there there are so much deep cuts in the DC universe with character, with detail, with details, with a lot of things. But it's it's still very easy for someone who just knows Flashpoint. To come in right. it, right? And was it something you really thought about to have that that balance between the between both I of that side? That's, that's a natural um, aspect of a. You've got Jeff Johns who knows everything about the DC universe, even mm -hmm. though I've given him a run for the money a couple times. <laughs> so uh, you know, we kind of. But he was very, very specific about it needed to mean something, and it not mm -hmm. just it didn't just. We weren't just doing Flashpoint Beyond because, oh, it's a money grab. It's like it has to mean something, not just mm -hmm. to the characters, but it had to mean something to the DC universe overall. And I'm, you know, I'm quick to make a joke and I love action. Um, Tim is so much about character and heart and stuff like that. So we all kind of balance the, ourselves out. But Jeff is definitely one that likes to 
put a bunch of Easter eggs into things. Yeah. Like we'll mention, I'll I'll mention one thing. Yeah, but he'll put in, he'll put, I'll mention one, he'll put in five, you know? <laughs> so, so, and he, he's, so much of it is playing off of other things he has done too. Um, so he has a lot of leeway and, and we're just, you know, we're there to learn and throw out ideas. I'm, I have no, I have no limit to the ideas that I have. So I'm like, Oh, what about this? What about this? What about this? You know? And like, they get somebody can hate 99, but maybe they'll like the hundredth is how I look at it. So I'm not precious with the stuff. We had such a ball, such a yeah. ball. It shows. And I love and on the first page, there's that, uh, that blackboard. <laughs> the first thing yeah. written on it yeah. is 5G averted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. That made me howl. That made me howl. I was like, I couldn't believe that. Uh, and, and that sentence by, by Superman with the everything matters, it's so much of what is this universe right now. It's really, it's, I was surprised. Really, I, yeah. I didn't think I would like this book, uh, that book, yeah. and uh, it's just super good. Super yeah, I think I, I I felt like that was the general consensus. People were like, "Why? <laughs> I don't want to read this." Ah. But over over the weeks, it seems like people have been more receptive to it, you know. And mm -hmm. I think they realized that hey, we're telling a fun story, we're telling something interesting, and then it's gonna, you know, I think they've already done the announcements for like the new golden age and stuff that Jeff's doing. It's kind of coming out of this yeah. a little bit, and um, and that's really exciting too because I've seen some of that stuff and I'm like wow you know as a fan i'm like whoa this is so rad and and then it's like you know and then what josh is doing with the dark crisis and stuff it's so cool i mean it, yeah. it, there's a lot of weird i mean i don't know it just seems like dc is taking a lot of cool risks and they're swinging they're making a lot of swings and they're really neat i mean people are doing a lot of different i mean there's goodness sake there's a jurassic league with you know like it's so yeah, good. and then there's and then there's like you know, uh, what else you have? You have the mech, the mech stuff, yeah. uh, and so I'm like, oh, they're just trying things, which is really neat. And then mm. suddenly you'll have Ron, Ron V doing you know this like amazing art thing, or Tom King will be doing this amazing like you know arty like thick like emotional tome, mm. you know. And then I'll make a joke. I'll make a dad joke over here, and you can do you know. I mean, it's all this cool stuff happening, which is that's really neat. what comic should have to I be have i think they have to be too because how many independent comic books are out there now that are doing really well yeah so if you're one of the big two you got to figure out how to do different things too okay. i i don't want every comic to be to be made for me but yeah. i want comics for everyone i don't care if there are some that are not for me i want them to exist i want yeah. people to enjoy those comics i i will always have enough comics to enjoy for myself so right. there's no problem on it. And I don't want to take too much of your time. So just a few uh, few last questions. Okay, okay, okay. First, something I have to say. I think it's the first time when I'm reading a comic, I can so much imagine the person writing it. <laughs> with the flash, there's that thing with that energy, with that uh, that sort of sense of, of humor, that, uh, that that craziness. And so, when I when I started to watch your, your interviews to, to prepare that one, I yeah. was like, "Yeah, it's him." Okay, I was already <laughs> picturing him. It's just him, of course. <laughs> so much, yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's him. Yeah, I knew that. I could have recognized him in a, in a crowd. Of course, but <laughs> I want to ask you, uh, what's your point of view as a writer on continuity? Con continu continuity. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, are you more on respecting continuity or a writer being able to do whatever he wants with the story? Oh, I no, that's I'm, interesting. I'm a big, I'm, I'm really big in the continuity. Um, yeah. I, I'm because I'm an, I love, I love the universe. <laughs> like if it's not, out, I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it when, <laughs> when something says, um, and I'll like, they go, Oh, uh, and, and this is the thing though. I don't know everything about everything and I'm hoping that editors or people will catch me. And so I've literally done this. I, I won't reveal where, but I've literally done where I've written something and I've seen somebody online go, that's not how that in the past, this is how da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like I know. And so I would literally write in a fix of how it made sense within continuity. I swear to you, I've done that because I love continuity so much. But 
you're dealing with DC Comics that has been rebooted six billion times. So it's like, what continuity actually works? What continuity doesn't matter? And um, I still think my viewpoint, um, I don't know if I can say this, but I do think that like Wally, Wally might be aware of every variation of continuity in my mind. Like like a I mean, he was on Metron's chair. He's mm -hmm. he's he's seen it all. He's kind of re fixed time and space. And and there's this part of me that thinks he might be aware. He might be aware of what's happened. But because he's so empathetic and he's so um, caring, you know, he has he. It, it is what it is. I think he's kind of come into kind of a Zen mode of his life. This is what it is today, and and that's okay. Um, but with me, if there, especially, like I said, there's a lot of books and I can't afford all the books. I, you know, I, I you know, I don't even have space and I'm in, I, I'm on, on DC, you know, and you yeah, no, it's like, infinite. okay, that's, that's so many, uh, months behind. So no. I'm catching up. Uh, but yeah, the, the continuity, continuity issue that I, I like, I, there was a, I'll t there was something, let's see, like uh, in my book, Girder gets crunched up. Yeah, and then I saw in like a, a dark crisis thing, he was running around, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and I so so then I had to make a comment in a comic coming up that's just like, ah, "I thought he was dead," you know. And it's like, <laughs> I guess he got better, you know. I saw him everywhere. Like like there has to be an explanation in my head because I'm such a logic nut about that stuff. Yeah. So I wish I could give out. I've been trying to think about this. I need to do. You remember Stan Lee used to do a no prize. And a no prize was like, you yeah. know, you would write in and you would you would find a glaring mistake mm. and be like you want a no prize. I I'm trying to think of a, a flash variation on that. <laughs> I think I've come up with something pretty good. I just need to figure out legally if I'm allowed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan Slot uh, in his uh, Shield Run uh, referenced that thing with uh, with the no prize. I, I, I remember. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Another thing I want to ask you because you have a pretty interesting. Uh, working uh, you had a very interesting working life you were in live action animation uh you worked with a former universal president at uh, rko yeah oh boy that was a trip i imagine you uh, you worked in marketing a lot so let's imagine i'm david laslav and i'm calling you and i say jamie adams okay you worked on a lot of, on a lot of things uh, about comics I want you to tell me three things that I will that I will have to prioritize to make comics sell even better. Okay. What, What would, would I be do for you? Three things that you will do to to help comics sell even better. Um, I think it's about distribution and lower price point. Like, I my mom would specifically buy me a comic book in a grocery store to keep me quiet. <laughs> you know, but but, I know you, that. but you could afford it, right? Yeah. Um, I think about this all the I think about this all the time. There are very few comic stores that exist, mm. and that's the only place you can buy comics. It has to be easily accept uh, uh, accessible. And I'll give you an example. I started writing comics. My mom said, "How do I buy this comic?" And I said, uh, "I don't know," because <laughs> it was like it was like unbelievably hard. You could go to dccomics.com and you couldn't buy a comic. Like, I was like, I don't understand. Can't you just go click a button that's in your cart and push another button and it comes to your house? No. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like, what do you mean? I can get a toy, a roll of toilet paper. I could order it today and I could get it today from Amazon, mm. but I can't order a physical copy of a comic book like the week it comes out. Like, that to me feels like something's broken. Yeah. You know? And Even digital, like, comicsology is broken. Right. I mean, so it's, it's like, it seems to be like, listen, everybody has digital. I, I do think digital, I think Marvel uh, Marvel Infinite, uh, or both the streaming things, I think are really cool. Yeah. Especially if you want to read back issues and do mm. stuff. And if you live in a small place like I do, it's the best uh, because you can't put long boxes everywhere. But why, when I was growing up, you know, you get a cereal box and there should be a QR code, free Free Batman comic, scan it, send you to the thing. You can read the comic. Oh, 
do you want a subscription? It's only this much. Here's a discount. Like getting people to that. The physical comic thing is we don't have very many. Like I live in Los Angeles. I think there's like one bookstore left. Um, there's comic book stores, but some of those are inaccessible too. You walk in, you're not sure what you need to get. Um, they, tr they, there's a lot of comic stores that try really hard. Like here's a dollar section for kids, but I feel like, I feel like it should be easy to push a button and get it sent to you. You should have like iTunes cards. There should be cards with Batman's face that says four comics for a dollar. <laughs> <The Batman Zelda. laughs> yeah. That's at like, before you check out of the grocery store. That you can go oh look four comics for a dollar mom can i get it mom please please mom and you grab it and you scan it on your phone and you're like oh look here's a comic book like i i do think there's a distribution problem and i think if you can i what do i know but like if you can get a better distribution you can lower the cost and then when you have a lower cost it becomes a lot easier i'll give you an example remember when napster came out and it was like people were just stealing music. They were just downloading music. Mm -hmm. And then Apple came out and said, you can download any song for like 99 cents. And it was like a price point that people went, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Click. And they, and, you know, they made tons of money. Uh, and I just think that there has to be a version of that. Because the comic books, I would hate to just, I would hate to see comic books die out and I don't think they will. They'll always have a kind of a, an audience, but I really want kids and younger people to get into it. And the, mm -hmm. the only way that happens is that they can afford it and it becomes easier to get because where yeah. do you get a comic now? You know, of course. I mean, that, I'll tell you an example, like Fortnite. I play Fortnite with my friends, whatever. They made that Fortnite comic. That comic oh. sold. It's yeah, crazy. because it was like there's a code on the back of the comic to mm -hmm. scan to get a skin. I'm like, you know, people were down on. It. I'm like, you just got a bunch of people to buy a comic book. Like, my wife had never read a comic, you know. And so I'm sitting and like, no, it's left to right, top to bottom. Like trying to explain this to him. And if you don't know, it can be daunting, but mm -hmm. but it also can be wildly addicting if you can get give people an on ramp to it. Mm -hmm. um, so if Zaslav asked me like, how would I do that? I would be like, man, you just got to figure out ways to get a greater distribution model and get it into places that aren't just comic book stores. Mm -hmm. You've got to figure out a way to get it into the hands of people. And I think, I think there's, they've done some in the past. DC has been very successful. Walmart had yeah. these like, yeah. like, like these books that you could pick up. They started doing ones with action figures that come with the comic book, but some of them are pretty violent comics. Like there's a flashpoint book with Barry action figure and I was like yeah but that that comic's pretty dark you know <laughs> like like I don't know if I want my kids yeah why don't you play with this daddy mm -hmm. why did Barry Allen ruin the universe you know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I wanted to, to, to have your opinion because uh, Urban uh, which is publishing uh, DC Comics in France and also a lot of uh, of indies came up with a new collection and it it goes with with what you were saying, and I find it pretty interesting. I don't know if you have uh, in the US uh, that sort of things. It's oh, soft wow. cover. Yeah, it's a little smaller than okay. usual comics. Yeah, and uh, they do it four times a year with uh, ten books each time. Okay. You see, you have like yeah. Oh, you can have Court of Owls. You can have Fables. Uh, there's yeah. Flashpoint. There's yeah. other books, and the thing. That one, uh, Court of Owls, you can have it, uh, in two volumes. It's 590, uh, euros. It's nearly the same thing uh, in dollars. Yeah. So for less than six dollars, you That's have amazing. That's amazing. You have uh, the first part. Seven, seven, nine for wow. Um, 300 pages. Wow. And wow. Like that. And I mean, that's, that's amazing. Cause that's probably like a 20, $30 book here in the U S. Uh, and if they do it soft cover, but at that price point, you got to buy it. <laughs> that's yeah. how I look at things. You know? I think that's cool. They train things to, to make people who are curious, but don't want to put 20, yeah. 30 yeah. Uh, in a, in a book. So I love it. And you can, you can, you can travel with it. That's you great. can, 
Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I don't, there's, there's nothing like that in the US. I think I've never seen a, I mean, they do that kind of soft trades. I mean, like the trade that I came out yeah, with, soft, yeah. but it's, it's a lot, it's a lot more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Man, thank you. Uh, it's already a uh, long time. I don't yeah, want to do too much of it. So I just I, I get Gabby. So thank you for uh, having me. No, on. no, 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 no. That's for you. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it was really, really cool talking with you. Uh, don't don't change anything. Ah, uh, continue. Well, hopefully we'll do it again. And I, you know, I it's need pleasure. to get back to to France. So you know, uh, I love it. I've been there once, and I okay. I absolutely fell in love. You know, man. Uh, I love that you want to do Flash for a long time. It's something we don't have anymore. Uh, people with long run on a, on a character. And this one is so good. I hope you will stay for a long time. Thank so, you. like Dr. Fate in the, the issue uh, with Flash, I talk to the people in front of their, scre uh, of their screen. And it's too, it depends on them. Buy the book. Buy the Flash. Yep. It's the best way to say you want to keep it like it is. So, yes. It's just on us. Man, thank you a lot. It was a thank pleasure you. to have you. Have a great day. Have a... Are there things you want to uh, talk about, about what's coming? I, mean, uh... I know I, there's a Mortal Kombat movie and a Super Sons movie, and yeah. uh, that'll be out next month, and then a great issue of The Flash next month. This month, we've got kind of the final uh, Flash book that's tying into Dark Crisis, mm -hmm. which is full of... Um, just the speedsters being speeds it's really fun i think it's fun um and then yeah we're on to one minute war at the beginning of the year can't wait to read that yeah. and at the beginning it's uh seven uh, seven hundred and ninety so it will uh, become a, a b monthly book yes that's fantastic yeah that's just great man thanks a lot yes thank have you. a great day and hope to to talk uh, to talk with you again uh, yes so it was a pleasure all right Bye. Bye. Thanks.